everyone, welcome to VIP Access with Aniko once again. I'm sitting right here with Katindi CV Njonjo, who is a futures expert, world renowned, and she's only among six other African women in her field. I know a lot of you are wondering what does a futures expert do? She has been part of this Formigani report that we released today, and we'll be talking more about what this report is all about and how it came about. Hi, Katindi. Hi, Aniko. How are you? I am fine. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much. I have to um, say that you're like one of the smartest women I've ever met. And this woman, she never forgets. And I guess you really can't forget when you're in the field that you're in because you're also recording a lot of data. Because we met 10 years ago, but when she saw me, she was like calling me my name. I was like, how do you remember me? And Nico, first of all, you are a celebrity and it is such an honor to have met you 10 years ago. And the fact that I, I, like, I work with young people, I mean, I always meet such lovely people. So the experience I have with them is really difficult for me to forget them. So I'm very honored to have met you, Aniko. Thank you so much. It's my honor. So right now we're sitting here because we've released a report at Form Nigani, which is called Kenya in 2030, Young Voices on Future Scenarios and Contraception. And you facilitated the um, think tanks, two think tanks that led to this report. This was done in the counties of Nairobi and Bungoma. So um, what's, what's the work you actually do as a futures expert? And how do you run a think tank? Like, how does that come about? So... First of all, I run a company that does research, policy analysis, and foresight. And so futures thinking is really about thinking about the future, the possibilities that could happen in the future, and then coming back to strategize on how, which future, which preferred future you would like, and how to strategize around that. But that's not done in a vacuum. So of course you have to understand where you've come from and where you are, and that requires a lot of research and data analysis to be able to understand the facts and figures. And then after that, you normally put together a group of people from diverse backgrounds. And those people, uh, um, you facilitate them to be able to have a conversation about what the data means, some of the experiences they have in their fields, and also how they begin to see the connections between the different data points. So you're using data, facts and figures, but also intuition, people's thoughts, people's feelings about those things. And once you do that, then you combine those and begin to see different possibilities about the future. But you get a wonderful opportunity to be able to explore and, in a sense, begin to see things that people are not making connections about. They might be very obvious, but when you think about things like that, you become very proactive about the future. So that's really my job, and I love it. I really, really love it. Fantastic. So the Form Nigani think tanks um, conducted in Nairobi and Bungoma more about how how was it when was it how many people were there how many days did you t did you all take all right so we put 20 people together in each think tank so a lot of them had a core in sexual reproductive health but one of the rules in um, scenarios thinking is that you have to mix the people so that you, you have people of different backgrounds so a lot of them perhaps were students we had lawyers people of diverse backgrounds and the fact that they were young people, they experienced the topic that we were discussing. So there's also the personal aspect of the experiences that they have. As the facilitator of this report, how would you rate this report? I mean, you've worked on different reports in different sectors. What we're saying with this report is that contraception is central to unlocking the um, future of this country, the development of this country. And a lot of people watching are like how is contraception linked to the development of my country or the, the the future of my country that's the biggest question yeah so one of the things we do in scenarios is to try and unpack the connecting uh, bits the connections that an issue has so one of the misnomers or mistakes that people make is to assume that contraception is a bedroom issue but if you think about it the number of siblings you are affected the amount of food that was cooked it affected your parents' monthly budget. And so people rarely make a connection between the number of children you have and, for example, the kind of development you can do even as a family. And that escalates to the national level. And so one of the things that is very important in scenarios is looking at, us, at an issue from a very wide perspective, looking at the connections. And we normally say that everything it works within a system. So one of the questions we are asking is how does for example contraception 
link with health, which is an obvious linkage. But also one can argue there's a linkage with agriculture. Um, so that means there's a linkage with food security. Means we need to manage the number of people. And manage here doesn't mean anybody wants to dictate. But we are saying, if I'm getting a child, am I able to give this child the quality of life that they need so that I don't leave that responsibility to the government? So making those connections is a very interesting and intricate conversation, but it begins to point to very many issues about how contraception then is not just a bedroom issue, it is a policy issue, it is a development issue. When we say like Kenya is, is headed in the wrong direction if we don't make a radical change, um, what are some of these stats and figures that are actually the reality of now? So one of the interesting things to understand is when family planning is talked about, traditionally it is talked about from the point of view of it is taking place among people who are married for purposes of either stopping childbirth or spacing children. But the reality of our country with the youth bulge is the fact that we are having younger people who don't subscribe to those traditional values. So they are having sex way younger out of marriage and in a sense because of lack of information a lot of the parents are not also equipping them with the right information it means that they are misadvised so what is happening then is that a lot of the pregnancies or the population is increasing but a big number of those children cannot be taken care of like I said earlier and so the alarming part of it is how do we handle this reality that we are in and, and then um, not in a sense um, and how do we also handle the sensitivities of our cultural issues? Like, can we have a basis to have a conversation about what are the realities and what are the things we have to do so that we come to a place where that is good for all of us, for the young person, as well as for the policymaker, for other development agents and so forth. Thank you so much, Katindi. I mean, great, great job. You're saying it's not difficult, but it's also not so easy. I mean. Especially when it comes to the start, you know, you really have to get it right. And for me, like, congratulations to you and everyone who was part of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, well, if people can download the report. Ligani, um, Kenya .ke. um Thank you so much, Katindi. Welcome, and I hope to have more conversations with you. And you yes, me too. Awesome. Thank you.